What is up designers? Glass morphism. I decided to see what the big fuss was and I messed around and I created this. Now I designed this thing in Figma and I built it in Webflow and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. Let's jump right in. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at my actual design in the Figma. So as you can see, actually, if you really think about it, the glass, the frosted glass effect is actually really simple. Um, you can see I've applied it over here. It's very basic. Um, I just have sort of like this card uh, with this glass effect and in it I have, you know, some icons, a CTA here, your typical avatar, um, uh, plus, you know, just some text. Um, so the way that uh, you build or you create the glass effect, it's really simple. Let me actually just do it right here. Um, what you need is basically a white solid. Um, you're gonna want to have, you're gonna want to bring down the opacity, maybe to something like 10%. Uh, yeah, 10%. Then you're gonna come here to effects, and you want to select background blur, and voila, you got it. And so you can bump this up to maybe something like 24. There you go. And to make this look even better, you can sort of soften up the edges a little bit and you can put um, like a, a stroke on here. So let's say if I make a white stroke, uh, maybe two pixels and you're going to want to bring down the opacity of this way down, maybe like 10 or so. And there you go. All right. Um, some people go as far as to um, do sort of a gradient, uh, you know, just to indicate like where the light is coming from. Um, but I don't think you need to go that far. I think the effect stands already just with the simple stroke. And also I am not so sure you can do a gradient, um, with stroke in CSS. So yeah, it's better to just keep it simple like this. And that is what I did to achieve this effect. Um, okay, so now let's jump into Webflow. So in Webflow, um, I essentially have a layer here called uh, Blur BG, and this layer is sitting underneath my glass card effect. So this is this is uh, everything you see here, like this avatar, this uh, container here, and the text CTA. That's in this glass card, um, and I have a background uh, set underneath it, another div that set uh, its position uh, absolute, I believe, yeah, pos position absolute, and it is negative um, 100 Z index, so it sits underneath the card, and I've applied the background blur effect to this layer. Uh, so if I come in here into the custom code, uh, you can see here, yeah, uh, the class uh, blur BG and I have this backdrop filter blur at 16 pixels. Very, very, very simple. Webflow doesn't seem to have the, like an option to do background blur yet, but I'm hoping it'll come to Webflow soon one day. Uh, but for now, the way I achieved it was to just target the class that I want to have the effect and use this CSS uh, property uh, called backdrop filter um, and blurring it at 16 pixels. So very simple and that's set underneath. Now, you might be asking why I didn't set the effect to my actual card and you would be correct in asking that question. Uh, the reason is um, I wanted to have sort of a 3D perspective uh, going on here on, on the actual card. So you can see here I have children's perspective set uh, to 1200 pixels. Um, this doesn't seem to work with uh, the background filter. So. I had to separate them and uh, apply the effect on one so that I can have the other effect on the other. But if you don't need the 3D perspective um, on your UI elements, then by all means, go ahead and apply the background filter to any element you want. Um, it will work. So yeah, that's that's about it. Um, just, just a little bit more about the actual design. I 
also created these uh, interactions. Very, very simple. So I have a mouse over interaction. And what's interesting about this is it is affecting the glass card on top and also the blur background underneath exactly the same way. So it looks like they're one card. Um, and then I have this very simple mouse hover uh, interaction. So when you, when you hover over the card, over the element, all of these uh, interactions fire. And yeah, it's very simple. And so that is what I did to achieve this effect glass morphism <laughs> it's not actually that new i actually i remember a couple years ago maybe three or four years ago microsoft dropped their fluent design video uh it was it was this video promo about fluent design their their brand new flu fluent design system it was super cool um it had all of this like you know materials there was like uh, plastic looking materials in UI that looked that had like subsurface scattering and all this it had like frosted glass all these materials um, and I think trends tend to come around stick for a little bit and then they go away and then they just circle back again through observation I've actually noticed something about designers and that's whenever a trend comes around designers tend to go a little bit overboard and I get it we get super excited there's a brand new design style here um, this happened with flat design when flat design came out it was flat everything like flat design on everything new morphism came around and it was you would see these designs that were like the buttons were new morphic the icons were new morphic um, text was new morphic everything was new morphic um, and I think we have a tendency to uh, see a design um, trend or like element and then just uh, apply it on everything and I believe the trick is actually more to treat it almost like you are a chef and you have your uh, spice um, cupboard or something and you are picking up spices and you're putting them onto your um, into your dish right you're not gonna put the entire thing and overload the dish with a spe uh, with a specific taste right you're just gonna sprinkle a little bit here and there just to taste right you don't want to overpower the flavor in your dish and it's the same way with design I think we should treat these trends almost uh, sort of like you know getting a new spice that you can add to your to your design keep the fundamentals keep you know the accessibility and everything there are uh, the contrast the hierarchy uh, symmetry all of these things use your design principles when you're designing and then take these trends and then sprinkle them on top of your design uh, don't overdo it and and voila you know uh, that's my take on uh, using these trends uh, for your benefit but anyways that is a topic for another video before you go though I want to take a second to introduce myself my name is Mubarak Marafa and I make videos about product design and the industry as a whole if you like this video and you want to see more just like it be sure to hit that subscribe button and stick around for a while peace